Barb, you've tweeted that you do not believe a special counsel is necessary, but you do see some advantages. Talk us through those. Yes, so it's a discretionary call, and reasonable minds can disagree. I think I share uh, Neil's view that it wasn't necessary here, but Merrick Garland thought that it was. But there are some advantages here. Uh, for one thing, if uh, Merrick Garland should leave the Department of Justice, perhaps at the end of this administration, the special counsel gets to stay, and so it can uh, live on even past the end of this administration. It also may very well be the case that it wasn't simply Donald Trump that triggered the, the, the appointment of the special counsel, but maybe it's also members of Congress. Uh, remember, they're supposed to lie low before an election. Maybe they've got people like Jim Jordan uh, or Mo Brooks in their crosshairs. And they were waiting to get past this moment before uh, announcing that they were going to proceed. Um, and also, if Merrick Garland gets called to testify on Capitol Hill, uh, you know, now he can say, look, this is all a matter uh, with a special counsel. It's not something I'm working on. And so let's focus on other things like voting rights and rights to reproductive health care and political violence. I've got those things on my plate. That's what I want to talk about. So I think here um, it, it allows him to do the day to day business of the Department of Justice, which is incredibly important, and have someone else who's very experienced, very respected, focus laser like on these two cases. Barb, I wonder what you make of the Washington Post argument that this could cause things to drag out, to stall out. You know, I think it's a possibility, but I, I, I think that it's very different than, for example, what we saw in Robert Mueller's investigation, where uh, the investigation was really just being launched when he got there and he had to start from scratch. Here we've got teams of prosecutors and agents who have been working for many months already. And all we're doing is introducing a new boss to oversee the high level decisions, the strategy decisions, the charging decisions. Um, and so I think those teams can continue to operate the way they have. I, I'm sure there may be some delay. If there was any big strategic decision that needed to be made in the next week or so, no doubt they're going to give Jack Smith time to get up to speed, read everything he needs to read, ask questions. Uh, so it may delay things a bit, but I, I think they'll get back on track fairly quickly. So I don't think that's a very um, significant concern here. Charlie, you've written extensively about the new special counsel, Jack Smith. I mean, beyond this question, should Garland have appointed a special counsel? It seems pretty clear why, if he was going to choose one, this was his pick. Yeah, Jack, Jack Smith has been a prosecutor for 30 years, and he has extensive experience in dealing with cases that are under a political uh, microscope. He ran for five, uh, for five years the public integrity section. That's the public corruption case part of the Justice Department. He was involved in getting rid of cases that everyone was watching in, in terms of uh, certain members of Congress who were suspected of corruption, but the facts just weren't there and the cases were lingering. He took heat for that. He was involved in bringing cases, including some hard cases that the government was not assured of winning. He won some of those. He didn't win some of those. And some of those he won, and then they were overturned on appeal by the Supreme Court. He's, uh, so he's used to operating uh, under intense scrutiny in a politically charged environment where everyone is going to be uh, constantly pointing the finger to, at him and, and, and coming out the other side. He's also a war crimes prosecutor uh, with some of the most intense kinds of crimes and uh, physical security issues imaginable in the law world. And so uh, this is not someone uh, who is a lightweight and this is not someone who's a neophyte, and yet he's in his 50s. This is also not a Robert Boer who's retired and, uh, you know, perhaps not entirely the person he was uh, 20 years or 10 years before he was appointed a special counsel. This is a guy who's in his prime. Uh, so, go ahead. No, no, I, I was going to ask Daniel, sort of talk us through Merrick Garland's decision here, specifically the timing. Why now? I mean, look, this, we, we need to keep in mind that before being attorney general, Merrick Garland was a judge. And so he's going to move very cautiously, very expeditiously through this process. And we also know, and there's no surprise, that, um, that since this announcement, there's already been political scrutiny over Mr. Smith. Um, and that is to be expected here. That's kind of the point of why Donald Trump announced his latest campaign for president now. He wants to paint this as uh, his favorite phrase, a witch hunt. And he wants to argue that all of the political investigations against him are, or all, excuse me, all of the legal investigations against him are politically motivated. That is why, that is the, the, the sort of dance that both 
Trump and the Department of Justice is doing right now post midterm elections.